we had our, our our boy Peyton Manning on just a little bit ago talking about the 98 draft. And uh, and I wanted to kind of ask you um, what your draft experience was like. You had a tremendous career at, at the University of Oregon, a ton of success. Uh, the Heisman campaign, everybody remembers with Nike and in the middle of Times Square and then the opportunity to go and, and, and play in the NFL. Uh, what was your draft experience kind of like? Man, um, my draft experience was a bit surreal, to be honest, because it, it was never a, I don't want to say it was never a thought of mine, but it was always so far off in, in, in the distance and right. so almost unattainable, right? You, you look at the percentages and it's, you know, 1% of the 2% who, who make it to college football, 1% of them make it onto the NFL. I mean, it's so minuscule that that moment was, was, was pretty surreal. And, and the thing that made it so great for me was, you know, back then they invited a couple of us to, uh, to New York for the draft, but they said, you know, you're only allowed to bring four people, six people or whatever that number. <laughs> you know why, you know why that's the case is because my, my, my family, we brought 30 people in 98 and they were like, nah, that's yeah. not happening again. <laughs> All right, so you're the, re- you're the re- okay. I'm the reason. I'm the reason. Well, so anyway, they're like, you can only bring five people. I was like, man, I grew up in an Irish Catholic family. Yeah. Like, there's no way that I can only show up with five people. So I said, I'm going to stay home, and uh, I'm going to watch her on TV over at my grandparents' house. And, you know, there were so we had 16 uh, first cousins, and then my dad is the oldest of eight, and then all the aunts and uncles, and then, um, you know, my college roommates. And so there were probably, I don't know, 100. 40 of us uh. at, at my grandma and grandpa's house, and we are just kind of sitting around, and, and it was great to be around family. You know, there's such this, this hype and, and this, you know, just the crazy media attention around the draft Mm -hmm. that it was nice to kind of have this just calming, um, I don't know, just foundation. I mean, I got picked third overall, which, um, you know, then the draft started at like nine in the morning. So I was done by like nine 45 and, uh, and then I went and played golf. So, uh, you know, it was a pretty decent day for me. It's, it's a great day. And it's, and watching that experience and seeing a lot of those experiences years later, it's something that I would have hoped I would have done and, and incorporated like my family and my hometown, uh, something like that. And we always see things different in hindsight. And one of the one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was like, I didn't see this coming. Right. I, uh, what were you aware of the expectations that would be that would come with being taken third overall? Because I, I didn't fully understand. I just assumed like I, I went to Washington State. We did something no one had ever done. People thought uh, I was going to be the next Bledsoe. I passed that, uh, and now I'm just going to do the thing in San Diego. I mean, uh, what, did you understand what the expectations were going to be being drafted third overall? I, I think you hit the. You, I think you kind of hit it on the head there, is which is I understood the expectations, but I expected perfection from myself. Right. Right. You. 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 Because. Because. That's what had happened, right? You showed up at Washington State, and you just went out and tore the conference apart. And it's like, well, yeah, of course, that's what I'm going to go do in the NFL. Yeah. We completely changed the face of Oregon Oregon football and made it a brand that, that people were starting to pay attention to. And and I, I just said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll go do that in, in Detroit. I mean, how perfect, you know, take a franchise that had been struggling a little bit, and, um, you know, the, and, and we'll go remake the NFL. Well, so I showed up in uh, in Detroit. I'll never forget this. Walk off the off the jetway, kind of look around that first day. You know, the day after I got drafted, and I just kind of look around, and this guy walks up to me like immediately as I just like passed the ticket counter there, and he's like, "Hey, Joey, welcome to Detroit." And I was like, "Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it." Hey, you uh, you've got one of the two toughest jobs in the city: goalie for the Red Wings and quarterback for the Lions. And we haven't had a quarterback here since Bobby Lane in like 1958. Good luck, man. And he tapped me on the back, and he just kept walking. I was like, "All right, cool." You know, there, but but that attitude and that expectation um, absolutely existed from the moment um, from the moment we got drafted. But I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that I don't know. I definitely know that I didn't come into that locker room or that opportunity with the business 
mindset that is needed now. Right. Right. It, it is it is truly a produce on the field or get the hell out of the way. Right. I'm still coming from that college idea of, hey, let's build camaraderie and let's, <laughs> you know, have team barbecues and we'll build this thing together from the ground up. And, you know, and then people start looking at you like, man, we got millions of dollars tied up right now produce right now or we're going to find somebody else to do it and and that had never been my reality before and and i think for some you know i think that has become more understood now absolutely understood now but people got to realize that this was that transition you know when you and i were you know kind of that nine let's call it 95 to 05 right kind of that transitional time before the nfl had truly become the massive you know, billion dollar business that it is today where you can stream everything and, yep. and get instant access. There were still conversations on if you pick the first round quarterback, should you sit him for a year or two or should they play right away? Like those were still legitimate conversations. So um, I, I don't know that I was necessarily prepared for that aspect like you talked about. Would you have stood for that as the competitor that you are? I remember, I remember, uh, in that instance, like I, there was nothing stopping me from from being the starting quarterback from day one. Like that would have been a failure if I didn't get to that position. See, I, I, looking back, I I, comp- I think it would have been the opposite for me, right? What was my strengths as a quarterback were never physical, right? I wasn't the biggest. I wasn't the strongest. I sure as hell wasn't the fastest. I had a good arm. I didn't have the best arm. What I did well is I studied and I learned and I was, I knew what the defense was doing before they did right. in college, right? I was able to, and that those type of things were what inspired my teammates to, you know, to hop on board and say, all right, I believe in this guy. It's not because I could, you know, run a four or five or throw a ball through a brick wall like that. That was never my style. And so I think looking back, I would have benefited from sitting for a year and being able to take it in and learn and say, oh, this is what I could do in this situation. Or this is how NFL defenses are different than college football. Um, Because what happened to me is I got thrown into the fire and I just kept getting kicked in the chin over and over. I know that feeling, but. I kept going back to the drawing board and saying, all right, let me try and fix it. But then when it didn't work, then I started doubting myself. And you know more than anybody. The moment you doubt yourself is the moment you are dead. You're done in that that, that, that level. Yeah, done. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.